Okay, Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My name is Dr. Shara Ashken Azmi and starting for this week and for another three more weeks, you will be dealing with me, uh, which is I will be covered on the new topic for EET uh, 307 Power Electronics 1. Um, so I believe all of you already um, follow the online teaching and learning uh, from Dr. Izwan uh, on the AC to EC regulator. So um, starting from this week, uh, we will uh, learn on the new topic which is on DC to DC converter. Okay, so for this DC to DC converter, there are three types that will be covered in this lecture. Okay, the first one is bulk converter. Um, inshallah will be covered in this week and for the next week will be uh, we will cover on the bu uh, the boost converter and lastly on the bulk boost converter okay so all these three type of converter bulk boost and bulk boost they are all non-isolated DC to DC converter so what does it mean by non-isolated DC to DC converter which means that it does not have any electrical protection within in, in the circuit so which means that what does it mean by electrical protection is by the mean of having a transformer included or connected with the circuit okay so we go for the we go for the lecture um, material for this uh, topic. So um, I will cover the first one is on the introduction. The second one, which is on linear regulator. Linear regulator is the most basic DC to DC converter. Okay, this is actually the 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 main the, the basic circuit that being uh, designed or that being created. Uh, with regards uh, to fulfill the needs of uh, of uh, producing a specific level of DC voltage okay and then we go for what that will be the main um, focus for this lecture which is on the what we call as switch mode regulator which is the advancement of linear regulator so uh, in this what we call as switch mode regulator uh, basically um, we, we add more uh, device a uh, more component in the circuit in order to improve or to do, to provide a better capability of dc to dc converter okay and then we go for the control of dc to dc converters how actually we can control the uh, output and the input of DC to DC converter what are the suitable methods or suitable techniques in order to control the DC to DC converter okay so for the introduction so first um, I will give the terminology of DC to DC converter so what does it mean by DC to DC converter which is what is the function of DC to DC converter is basically number one is to convert the unregulated DC input okay what does it mean by unregulated DC input is you can't control the DC input it can be varied yeah okay into a control which is a specific what kind of voltage level that you want at your output so you want to control that in order to achieve that kind of level of voltage okay at a desired voltage level yeah okay so for the dc to dc converter uh, it can be also used to step down or step up a dc voltage source so step down which means that your input will be higher than your uh, output step up is your input will be sm uh, lower than your output which is your output will be higher than your input so where do this DC to DC uh, converter normally applied there are a few um, application and it uh, will um, and DC to DC converter is being used widely 
um, in various application for example in track uh, traction motor control in electric in electric automobile and for this truck second one in on the G, uh, regenerative braking of DC motor DC voltage regulator or what we call as DC power supply the one that we have in the lab okay and if let's say that we uh, in, uh, put uh, connect together with uh, an inductor it can generate a DC current source and lastly uh, it, uh, DC to DC converter is um, considered to be part of the energy conversion in renewable energy technology okay so like uh, in the previous um, slide I did mention that the um, type of DC to DC converter that will be covered in this lecture is on the non-isolated converter okay so we go um, to the a type of non-isolated and isolated converter and then what are the advan a bit of advantage and disadvantage of both type of converter okay so for non-isolated um, converter okay one of the advantage is that it's simple okay um, but the the disadvantage is that it does not have any electrical isolation between the input and the output which is there is no transformer that being um, connected together inside this DC to DC converter so what are the example of non-isolated um, DC to DC converter we have okay bulk boost bulk boost tube and sepid converter okay meanwhile for isolated converter it will use the transformer in order to provide the electrical isolation between the input and the output okay and normally for isolated converter the number of the semiconductor uh, switches that being used is normally um, more than non-isolated DC to DC converter alright so what are the example of isolated converter we have a flyback uh, DC to DC converter forward converter push pull converter and also full bridge converter okay we go for the next slide All right uh, this is um, the basic circuit of DC to DC converter uh, is actually a bit of um, the hi uh, history of DC to DC computer where actually uh, this computer being designed from here yeah? okay so this is um, as you see here this is the basic circuit of DC to DC converter which is it consists of input a switch and also a load okay so there are all only three component uh, in for a DC to DC converter source DC source a switch and a load all right um, so the operation for this uh, linear regulator okay basically it will based on the operation of a switch so whether your switch is on or whether your switch is off so when your switch is on it will act it switch on it will act it like a closed circuit if switch off it will be acted similar to open circuit yeah so if let's say that uh, you need to draw the circuit so make sure that when your a switch operation is on you can be um, rep represented by a um, short circuit or closed circuit when your switch is off you are represented by an open circuit all right so for the selection of this switch over here it can be either uh, BJT MOSFET GTO and RGBT either one should be okay all right so when your switch is closed 
the input voltage will be appear across the load which is there will be a current flow throughout your circuit over here okay so when your switch is off there will be an open circuit here so open circuit so there will be no connection right so an open circuit no connection so there will be no current flow that's why you will get a zero output here see your output will be equals to zero which is okay this one is um, by mean of your switch is open yeah so when your switch is closed switch closed okay there is an output okay what is the amplitude of that particular output which is our v naught over here okay so what is the amplitude of your v naught over here it will depends on what are the um input uh, what are the supply or, or what are the voltage within the circuit uh, within this circuit over here which is the only amplitude that we have is our vs over here so that is why the amplitude of your output voltage will be equals to your vs so your amplitude of output voltage will be equals to your vs okay <clears throat> right Okay, and then so um, let's say okay this is uh, actually the waveform of your output voltage here so you can see that the shape is a square shape okay this is one cycle yeah so one cycle from 0 to t okay we divided into half okay why is that we divided into half because we assume that our converter will be uh, turn on for a period of 50% so turn on a period of 50% and it will be turned off a period also with 50% so total out which is T equals T on plus T off you will get 100% or actually 1 so your T will be equals to 1 so your T on will be equals to 0 0.5 your T off uh, also will be equals to 0 0.5 okay alright so that's why this part here is actually um, T on this part here is T off okay right okay and then what else that we need to know about this um, waveform over here oh okay so the duration uh, of your T on here the duration of your T on um, we define it in term of what we call as duty cycle so your D uh, over there is your duty cycle yeah so your D will be equals to duty cycle right so uh, a period when your T on will be equals to T on will be equals to DT which is D you multiply by your uh, the whole switching time T okay and then your T off the period when your switch is off will be equals to um, is the range between DT and T okay so if let's say that so t minus dt okay you take out the t here you'll be equals to okay which is t um, multiplied by 1 minus d which is the period of your turn off time all right so um okay with regard of this equation over here okay i will explain in the next slide because i don't have um, any uh, empty space to write it down okay never mind okay but you need to know is that okay the average output voltage here okay will be equals to duty cycle multiplied by vs which is okay your average how to find this average over here is that by um, you uh, by <coughs> using a finding the area under the curve so um, 
I think I need to have another uh, empty slide, but never mind. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, I will explain later um, in, in the next slide. Um, okay, so for the by mean of average is that you need to find the area under the curve. So area, the formula of finding area. So first you need to identify what is the shape of your um, area that you want to find. So here you can see that the shape is a square, right? Because this is obviously zero. Okay, so the shape is square. So what is the formula of finding area for square? Which is your height multiplied by your width. Yeah. So your height here is equals to Vs here. And your width here is equals to dt. Okay. There. Okay, but you need to integrate within one switch time, which is 1 over t over here. So the t will be cancelled out. It will uh, leave you with v average will be equals to d multiplied by vs. All right. Okay. Right. Now we go for the third uh, segment on this lecture, which is on control of DC to DC converter. So by what? Uh, by mean is that how we can generate the duty cycle for our DC to DC converter. Okay, so the duty cycle D, okay, it can be the range is from 0 to 1. You cannot go um, less than 0 and you cannot go beyond 1. So it will be range only from 0 to 1 here. Okay. Okay, so your duty cycle can be varied by varying the T on or T, your switching time or your frequency. Okay, so you can vary your duty cycle by these three um, elements which is your T on, your T and your F frequency. Alright, so the simplest control um, of generating a duty cycle by use of pulse generator or a timer uh, in order to produce a set of pulses okay with fixed width time and amplitude voltage so if let's say that your control uh, method that you are using is a timer of pulse generator so if let's say that here you want the expected output so v not here from these sentences, it means that you can produce a set of pulses with fixed width time. So, which is that? That is why here, okay, this is one certain time. So, you will have a fix. This one here, this 50% T on and 50% T off, they are fixed. Okay, you cannot vary the width of the pulses. Okay, so fix. If let's say that you can use, you want to vary the width of the pulses, you don't want to make it uh, fixed at 50%. You can use that by using this what we call as pulse width modulation control. Okay, uh, if you are using pulse width modulation control, so if let's say that I draw the um, output voltage, you can have, let's say, your T on time is longer than your T off time. You can have this one if you are using PWM. Or you can have your T on time is shorter than ten, your turn off time. This can be done by using PWM only yeah? if you are using a uh, pulse generator or timer you cannot do that you can uh, uh, because it only produce a fixed pulses with fixed width yeah okay <clears throat> all right for the PWM okay you can vary 
the width of the pulses okay uh, so you will have more flexibility in order to control um, your output voltage okay uh, for the uh, PWM uh, normally we will divide into two uh, techniques which is what we call as amplitude uh, amplitude with modulation and also what we call as um, var um, frequency uh, modulation control okay for frequency modulation control you control the frequency of your converter for pulse width modulation you control the width of your pulses width of pulses by mean of controlling the your duration of your turn on time and your turn off time this one here you control a frequency what we call in DC to DC computer is what we call as switching frequency okay Alright, um, okay, for frequency modulation control, um, however, it has um, a disadvantage uh, whereby it uh, normally it generates more harmonics as compared to PWM up here, okay, at unpredictable uh, uh, frequency and also the filter design will be difficult so this is the disadvantage of using frequency modulation control so normally um, in order for you to design your dc to dc converter to control your the output of your dc to dc converter you can use either your uh, uh, pulse generator which is you will create a uh, fixed pulses or you can control what we call as your pwm um, in order to con generate the duty cycle so once you generate your duty cycle which is you generate this uh, the set of pulses of your output you'll be able to control your output voltage okay all right so now we proceed to the uh, next slide okay for the next slide over here uh, which is um, a bit uh, explanation on what does it mean by path width modulation PWM okay so in this PWM the on and off state of the switch is generated by comparing the low frequency reference signal with high frequency carrier signal so this um, for the PWM you need to use two signal one what we call as reference signal and the second one is what we call as carry signal so these two signal will be fit in into what we call as a converter a, a comparator sorry a comparator so inside this comparator it will compare uh, the amplitude of these two signal in order to pro, um, to produce um, a pulse or either the pass is 0 or the pass is 1 okay okay so you have reference signal and you have the carry signal okay these two signal will be fit in into a comparator and this comparator the output of this comparator will produce a set of pulses either uh, 1 and 0 okay so um, how to make sure that your pulses is one or your pulses is zero so there are uh, rules um, within the comparator uh, this is the comparator yeah okay uh, to, to compare uh, these two signal over here okay inside this comparator the output signal we go high you will have a uh, the output is 1 okay when the reference signal the amplitude of your reference signal is higher than your carrier signal so um, if let's say that the amplitude of your um, carrier signal is higher than your reference signal then you will get 0 at your output 
okay or your pulse is low okay then from this combination you'll be able to obtain a square wave gate pulses okay so these pulses will be then fit in into the gate terminal of your switch okay remember for the switch we have three terminal gate and then we have the um uh, the collector and also the emitter so uh, these pulses will be fit in into your gate terminal okay so this is a, a illustration of the pwm okay this is your uh, carrier signal okay carrier okay for the carrier signal you can have either uh, this is the shape of sawtooth okay for carrier and the second one you can have the shape will be a triangular okay like this so it will be compared to your reference signal okay your reference signal which is this one over here okay is a dc signal why is that is dc signal because your computer wants a dc output if let's say that you have another type of computer and the computer um, the output of that computer is ac signal then your reference signal can also be ac signal so your for your reference you can either have dc signal or ac signal okay for carry you can have um so tooth the one that being illustrated and also triangular signal okay and then this is basically the um type of signal that you will have for both okay and then we go for the amplitude for this reference and carry signal okay for the reference signal the amplitude will be depends on your duty cycle so which mean that the amplitude can be within 0 to 1 okay meanwhile for your carrier signal okay the carrier signal needs to be fixed because we want to vary the frequency which is um the 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 number of the um signal so the amplitude needs to be fixed okay the amplitude for your carry signal okay will be fixed to uh, in this example here will be fixed to one so plus one volt okay for your reference signal just now is from zero to one the amplitude is can be varied from zero to one volt yeah or we define is in terms of duty cycle so you need to uh, get rid of the sine v here okay and then in terms of the frequency for both signal so we have the uh, reference signal and the carry signal so for your reference signal okay the frequency will be follow your output frequency so in this case normally we will use 50 hertz frequency this is for your reference signal yeah okay so if let's say that uh, you are let's say you are working in different country that being using 60 hertz as the output frequency use 60 hertz all right meanwhile for the carry signal the frequency Oh, where should I write? Okay, the frequency here okay, will be uh, depends on what we call as switching frequency. Okay, and uh, normally it is a high frequency. So for this DC to DC converter, uh, the frequency, the range of frequency, it can be varied. You can select any range of frequency, but the normal range must be um larger than 20 kilohertz and you can go up to 1 megahertz 
or maybe 2 megahertz okay why is that it must be greater than 20 kilohertz this will be explained next in the design consideration of dc to dc converter all right now we go for the equation with regards to duty cycle okay your duty cycle here okay will be equals to your duration of your turn on time okay turn on time here over one switching time so in this t here will be equals to the summation of your turn on time and your turn off time okay and also if let's say that you relate with your frequency t will be equals to 1 over f f here will be equals to your switching frequency eh? all right okay if let's say that um this is um what we call we, we define duty cycle with regards to the time we can also define your duty cycle with regards to the amplitude which is this part over here which is your duty cycle will be equals to the amplitude of your carrier over amplitude of your reference okay so this is amplitude yeah all right okay so uh, remember you have three way a uh, two way to define the equation for your duty cycle the first one is with regards to the um, time which is the duration one uh, of your switch on over the one switching time or the second one with regards to amplitude amplitude of your carrier